we can talk a lot about science, and you've heard a lot about that. We can talk a lot about economics, and these days all you hear is economics. But I think the, the, the part of the debate that we have not heard enough about is the moral and ethical part. You know, what, is the, what is our responsibility here? What is, what is right and what is wrong? Because I think in the end, uh, economic arguments, while powerful, um, aren't as strong as arguments about what's right. Any change of climate is going to put stresses on a national, international community and tend to give rise to misunderstandings of geopolitical kinds and others. And it's, it's a uh, destabilizing factor in the world. That's what worries me about the carbon dioxide issue. Countries are being overrun by migrants, mostly Muslims. A new study published yesterday finds climate change exacerbated the worst drought ever in modern Syria, aggravating social unrest in the country and helping to push it over the brink into civil war. According to Monday's report, the Syrian drought, worsened by climate change, was a key contributor in the ensuing four years of conflict. Conflict that has led to at least 210,000 deaths and forced more than 10 million people from their homes. Exxon Mobil, the largest of these companies, knew all the facts thoroughly as far back as 1977 and chose to put out false information or to support those who put out false information. Okay. really is the temperature that, that is uh, helping to make this drought so severe. This drought has set a number of records uh, along the way over at different times of the, of the last four years. California has approximately one year of water remaining in reservoir storage. I don't think we can start right away with the science. I think we have to start with the values. There's just a fundamental issue of morality that, that we were given this planet in a certain form and I think it's our responsibility to leave options open for future generations. It seems clear to me also that climate change is a problem we can no longer be left to a future generation. They've sort of stopped denying the science so much that basically we can't do anything because China, because China and India, China and India. China's made an empty promise to do a little bit by 2030. I don't think that you're ever going to get third world countries to come around to this. China is still opening one coal plant per week. India is doing their damnedest to catch up with them. China is set to announce a national carbon cap and trade system due to start in 2017. The plan would make China the world's largest carbon emissions market. India has finally announced its plans in this 38-page document. One of the country's main goals is to cut its carbon emission by one-third over the next 15 years. What's the big deal about flowing water on Mars? Look at the temperature data that has been reported by NASA, has been made up, it's fraudulent for however, however many years. There isn't any warming, there hasn't been for 18 and a half years. And yet they're lying about it. They're just making up the amount of ice at the North and South Poles, they're making up the temperatures, they're lying and making up false charts and so forth. So what's to stop them from making up something that happened on Mars? You will struggle now to find climate deniers inside the oil industry. It's just become unacceptable. We recognise climate change. The next thing is we accept the fact the majority causes man-made, a large part of it down to fossil fuels. There has to be a solution. And what that implies is the need for an energy transition.